As my understanding of global social realities grew, my interest in literature as a consumer activity faded, though I sought out and took creative writing courses. The more I studied the social sciences, the clearer it seemed that sooner or later I would move from academic study into social action. I did not see such a step as an abandonment of creativity. I do not define creativity exclusively in terms of working with images and words. I saw the promise of working to change unjust social structures into equitable egalitarian ones as beautifully creative. To me, the prospect of giving up writing to participate in revolutionary work did not mean sacrifice. It meant creative fulfillment. Had my attempt to work as a social revolutionary, part of a group creating a just, egalitarian society, succeeded, I might never have written a single book, for I consider a just society more beautiful than any work of art. Taken from The Eloquence of the Scribes, a memoir on the sources and resources of African literature. Written by Ai Kwe Ama. Ai Kwe Ama is without a doubt my favorite novelist uh, or writer of what they call fiction. What I prefer to refer to as symbolic realism or as my father would put it, metaphor of reality the reason being is that the word fiction is too small a word to define what i queer amar does with his writing his his style is poetic it's prose it's his narrative um you know uh is full of it is, it's able to bring out the philosophical elements and the spiritual elements uh of whatever story he is telling um and he is not afraid uh, to be prescriptive he's not afraid to outline a course a defined course um of action um and he's able to accentuate and bring out certain principles and values through how he delivers and presents the narrative um of the story so just as an example um, probably his most celebrated work is 2000 Seasons um, and then next is probably The Healers. Many people that read Ayakuyama, I'd say for most people, those are his two uh, most celebrated works. Using 2000 Seasons as an example, one of the brilliant things about that book is that there are no seriously serious main characters yeah, for at least the majority of the book and even when there are there are characters like you know they 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 they're told in the context of a collective. So there are the narrative is told from the perspective of groups of people, and a particular group of people over a number of generations. So the people themselves, yeah, have um a a character. They are a character in the story, um, and then among that group of people, you have various different characters. Uh, groups of people that represent different principles, different values, different ideals, different schools of thought. And so the, narr- the story is about the relationship between these groups of people and what they represent. Yeah? Um, and within that, um, the, the individual uh, uh, you know, story or motivations are outlined. Yeah, but it's always within the context of the collective, and so it leads you to thinking in that way. But even deeper, I said even deeper, as well as that, um, the 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 dialogue, yeah, um, in the particular story, because the, it, it, you know you can get way into the story before there's actual dialogue, yeah. Um, but there's a constant dialogue in the narrative in the prose because it is designed to dialogue with you yeah you're having a conversation with what he's writing yeah um you know what i'm saying uh in terms of how it relates to yourself and that is very apparent i suppose many writers can do this i have not come across one that does that that achieves that in the same way um as uh Ayikwe Ama. so so this particular book eloquence the eloquence of the scribes 
um, is a memoir, okay? And um, it's one of his few um, acts of what they would call non-fiction, all right? Where he's basically exploring um, the value of literature in African culture and in African revolutionary activity. As he says, a memoir of the sources and resources of African literature. So he's going through his experience as a writer, how he comes into writing, his study of um, African-centered literary tradition, um, and how we can develop frameworks, methodologies, um, and practice in terms of how it serves us um, going forward. Yeah, I say all that to say that when you read um, Aikwe Ama, you will definitely get the vibration that he is most definitely on purpose. He's fulfilling his purpose as a writer. Yeah, not just as a writer, but in terms of what he is writing. And so this statement, um, you know, that I've just read is a bit of a revelation. Yeah. How can somebody who is born to do what they're doing, who seems so well, you know, you know, created, yeah, for this particular endeavor, well prepared, um, has all the gifts and talents that he needs to be able to fulfill it. Uh, how can someone like that make a statement like this? You know what I'm saying? Um, but I understood it because it stood out to me. Yeah, it stood out to me um, in the sense of me being an artist myself, you know what I'm saying, in the, in the realms of spoken word or words artistry, me being in the media where creativity um, or creative endeavor or art is um, paramount. I understood completely, absolutely what he was saying. Um, and I think it has to do with the purpose. Um, what, you know, I think I share with Baba Aikwe a purpose in terms of what artistic endeavor is supposed to produce. Um, the reason why it stood out to me is because of what my inspirations are, what I am inspired by. Um, if you've been following this channel, you will know that over the last couple of months I have done, presented some things in terms of um, Amowale Malcolm X, um, particularly as it relates to his work um, uh, building the Organization of Afro-American Unity, OAAU, um, and, you know, um, dictating the program of the OAAU. Uh, you would have seen uh, a couple of videos addressing the Grenada Revolution um, and Morris Bishop and the People's Revolutionary Government um, of Grenada. Um, and I am inspired um, by these examples in our history, yeah? Um, and what, 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 what stands out to me about them or what concerns me about them in this day and age is that it's not unusual for us to be having conversations in our community and you know the work the principles the values the ideas the strategies of our ancestors are referred to as out of date not relevant to the present moment um you know i mean old washed up and these kinds of things um and this is ludicrous to me yeah this is ludicrous to me um because of how i see them you know what I'm saying? Um, and as well, I mean, when we look at it in, in relation to art, yeah, what Aikwe Ma has done in this particular quote is, is uh, put revolution or revolutionary work and artistic endeavor, um, you know, on two sides of a scale, so to speak, and assess them in terms of the, 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 this, this one defining factor of creativity. Because both of them are creative endeavors. Yeah? Both of them contain creativity. And so when we look at who we 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 look to today as the examples, yeah, you know, the the people in terms of our community, in terms of those who we shine a light on as relevant examples for us, um, in this uh or people that have demonstrated relevant strategies and modes and archetypes of development. We have people um, like Jay Z, for example, or Kanye West, or um, you know, if we want to go beyond that, let's say Oprah. 
and maybe beyond that, Obama. You know what I mean? And these people are said to be, you know, the relevant archetypal models for a certain level of achievement in today's world. And this is not to devalue um, any or diminish any, any of the value that they represent. Yeah. And I think in some senses, some of what we attribute to them is questionable. But let's use, you know, uh, the artists themselves, Jay-Z and Kanye or Beyonce, um, you know, and, and any of these people. Um, as the example, you know, we don't want to diminish them and what they do, the, the the value of what it is they do, yeah. But I am confused by the idea that any of the people I've mentioned disqualify or neutralize the relevance, yeah, of the ancestors, the revolutionary ancestors of our history, and I'm intrigued by the implications of what it means, yeah, when we say that. You know what I'm saying? What does it mean when we say that these people are outdated, irrelevant, washed up? What does that mean? What does that really mean? What it is? What is it that we're really saying? Yeah? Because for me, I see these people as representing a maximized example of creativity. A maximized, the ultimate example of uh creativity i see what they did in effect what they what they achieved as a work of art i am intrigued by the problems that they were trying to solve and the methodologies the strategies that they were able to implement in terms of solving those problems i see that as the height of artistic or creative endeavor so for example if i look at thomas sankara yeah in burkina faso yeah president of revolutionary Burkina Faso I am inspired by how he was able to organize a nation of people yeah man woman and child and I mean that literally there was children involved in this to plant what over a million and some say over two million trees yeah to combat the expansion of the desert or desert, des desertification in Burkina Faso. I'm inspired by that. I, I'm, I'm inspired by, you know, the minds in the room that identified this problem and had these conversations and came up with this solution of planting over a million trees. I'm inspired by what it took to organize a nation of people, including school children, to get on their hands and knees and plant those one million trees i'm inspired by that that to me is the height of creativity and the height of as i Kriyama puts it creative fulfillment um I'm, I'm inspired by um how maurice bishop and the people's revolutionary government of grenada were developing new systems of government of self-governance how they were able to organize a nation to collectively contribute to rights and distribute the national annual budget on a yearly basis. I'm inspired by that. I'm inspired by how they were able to organize and, you know, their nation, put these pieces together, yeah, like a work of art and organize different segments of their nation so that they were able to contribute to the, the governance of the nation itself, the government of the nation itself. I'm, I'm inspired by how they were organizing after getting rid of the, the constitution that was given to them by uh, Elizabeth II, how they, were able, how they began the process of organizing the nation to write a new constitution. I am inspired by that. I'm inspired by the women of the Universal Negro Improvement Association and African Communities League, the UNIA ACO, as founded by the most eminent Marcus Mazaya Garvey. I'm inspired by the women of the Universal Black Cross Nurses who developed a social welfare institution yeah, that was studying illnesses among the, in, within the African world, uh, developing suggestive cures or treatments for said illnesses and producing pamphlets, literature on these respective uh, treatments and cures. How they were able to develop uh, maternity uh services and methodologies from among them for the african people uh, of the world and develop a nurse training 
school to train others to bring other young women into this practice i'm inspired by that this to me is the ultimate example are the ultimate examples of creative endeavor so they can never be outdated or washed up i i i i see how i see them and i and i'm realizing that not everybody sees them in this way yeah but i see these works yeah as artistic i see them as artistic and this speaks to me um as an artist as a spoken word artist as uh, um you know somebody who's involved in media yeah an artistic media to be specific we've got kush tv um because this idea of purpose might the purpose of why i do spoken word and why i do got crush tv is to inspire people around these examples to act upon these examples and update them evolve them and produce that level of creativity in this time i don't write poetry yeah as i say in one of my poems just to inspire poets to write poetry the the, the, the purpose of this art is not to inspire this more art do you understand what I'm saying? It it would be redundant of 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 man, yeah, to just feel fulfilled in the idea. Say, yo, what me do? Inspire a man for for write up our next poem. You know what I mean? This is a and and this is what what I what I what I find that in in the sense of if our if our revolutionary ancestors are outdated, and then the examples that we replace them with are just you know artists of this time who are successful within the industry that they're in again not diminishing the value that they do have but if that is the example that we replace our revolutionary ancestors with then it seems to me that we've put a cap on our aspirations we put a cap a ceiling a wall in front of and above what we are able to achieve and how far we're able to go yeah and as an artist you know what this reinforced what i Ma said reinforced to me yeah when he says um i consider a just society more beautiful than any work of art i understand that even as an artist even as somebody who produces art and is inspired by the art of others i get that you know why because it occurred to me after reading that that it is easier to create a revolutionary piece of art within an oppressive society than it is to create a revolution within an oppressive society or to come out of an oppressive society it's easier yeah it's easier but the revolutionary work is no less creative and one could argue as he is arguing that it's even more creative you know, I'm I'm inspired by that. I could never diminish the work of my ancestors in such a way. So I continue to flag up and promote these examples and create art that highlights these examples towards this purpose because in as much as these ancestors looked into the depth of their mind bodies and souls and were able to bring out this creative essence it is that creative essence that inspires the art that i do in the hope that the art that i do inspires others to bring out the revolutionary creative essence within themselves shakara flexion taken from the eloquence of the scribes as written by Aikwe Ama Tendamwari.